Hi, sweetie. Hey, nice to hear from you. Oh, it's so awesome to hear from you. I've been listening to you for months since we had our lovely session. Oh, and, nice. um, well, I, I have uh, a, a question, but just a quick report to let you know my life. I feel like um, I've been in the river of love. It's oh. been flowing since oh, nice. we... I, I went to Colorado and visited my family who I haven't seen in four years, and I got a job in the. In, I, I, it's it's really amazing. I'm packing up my home in Hawaii and I'm moving to Colorado. Oh, nice! Yeah, that was your desire. <laughs> yes, and 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 it's come through. Um, it's come through, and I just feel like my family. They're just so. It was such an awesome reunion, and everything that I've been learning the last three, four years from my own grief of 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 my life going up in flames and coming out the other end just grateful. Yeah. It's like they're very open to hearing me and to asking me questions about their own relationships. It's so beautiful. Oh, I nice. just um, oh, I'm and, happy and for you. um, it, it, it's. I'm I'm very happy. I have a lot of work to do to get to get this move going, yeah. and I I know that can I know that can happen. And um, one of my friends who lives there is is a really deep empath, and um, and yet she can be very harsh. It's it's a very strange combination, Lisa, that she can be snappy, and if I try to. If I try to say, oh, it reminds me of like of your how your father treated you, she snaps, doesn't want me to psychoanalyze her, yeah. so I try not to do that. Yeah. But she says a couple things that I would like your clarity on. Yeah. I've heard other people talk on this, and there's two two mantras, so to speak. It's all good, or it is what it is. And I, I, I'm not sure where she's coming from when she says that, and I like to ask her, but I would like to have some clarity from the from your own non-dual, from your own experience. Do those two statements have any uh, reality for you? I would, I would love to hear, you know, it's it's all good or it is what it is. That those That's my question. Well, when it comes to conversation, we're always in negotiation. So when yeah. I'm teaching people, it's different. But when I'm by myself or when I'm with my partner or friends or something or family, although I can be guilty of it sometimes, I try not to negotiate with any non-dual statements. Yeah. So I try and try not to, so I try not to um, negotiate. So most, most interactions are negotiations. Unless someone say, asks me a question like, how are you? Like maybe if you're American, you'd say it's all good. But I don't think we say that in, in English. Um, it's all good. I don't think it's common that we say that. I don't say that sentence. Uh-huh. Okay, so that one, um, it's all good. Um, like that doesn't have any relationship to me. And what was the other sen sentence that you saw it said? Uh, it it is what it is. It it's is just what if it something is. bad if something bad has happened and I tell her I'm sorry, she just she just kinda goes, Oh, it is what it is. Yeah. yeah. Um yeah. I I tend not to try to use any spiritual stuff. I do, I'm guilty of it. I can my partner's most probably listening, he's like, Yes, you do all the time <laughs> But, <laughs> but I, I actually try not to um to do that. I do. I have done it, though. I am guilty of it. Um, uh, but predominantly, we're in negotiation. So if I am using any spiritual con concepts, it's on the human level, and it's about negotiation. So if I would so say, for example, somebody came to my house and was very needy, like energetically was very needy, I might tell them, but that's about a negotiation. That's that I can't tolerate like I can't, my system can't tolerate too much neediness. It can't, it can't, it, it gets exhausted. But that's my negotiation and that's my karma if the other person gets upset. That's got nothing to do with non-duality. So I will tell them and maybe if I don't set up boundaries and tell them quick enough, I'll end up snapping. So I'll bite at that person. But um, uh -huh. But hopefully I've been aware and I've noticed that I'm finding this draining or I don't like this or I don't like that. And I try to just just that when we're in when we're in company, we're negotiating. So if we look at playwriting, so 
that's what I trained in and that's what I love and it taught me so much about psychology and philosophy. Um, so if you look at playwriting, when you write plays, and I think this is exactly the same with humans, everything is about what the other person, what each person gets from the situation. Now, if you're an empath, you've also got the interest of what the other person feels and thinks. But if you're not an empath, then it's just about what you can get from that situation. So if someone in my play said it is what it is, what's the other say sentence you said? It is what it's it is. all good. It's all good. I would use that as a t tactic of deflection. Ah. That's how I would use yeah. that tactic, that that sentence. Yeah. You can, yeah. You, like, like, but the thing is, is he could also say, like, I can imagine if you're American, like, I can imagine, like, um, someone said, are you having a good day? Because having a good, like when somebody asks you, are you having a good day? Like in America, this was very confusing because people at my university, I went to university for an exchange period that we did an exchange with my one from London. And, um, and they, you'd be walking down the corridor and people would go, what's up? And this is very confusing to an English person. Like, I don't know what to reply <laughs> to what's up. So I'd go into, well, I've been here and I've been there. And I would give them a whole explanation about exactly what I've done. But it's <laughs> like saying what's up back to someone is like really a weird thing. For But in England, we would say something like, all right. But I can imagine an American person, if you said to an American person, um, how you doing? That's a, maybe an American saying, or maybe English, I'm not sure then saying it's all good, I don't think that would be a deflection. That's just a way of communicating that very superficial conversation of establishing that you're both okay and maybe you're not. But but if it was in a deep conversation and somebody started saying that, so it's all good. So say if I wrote a scene and, um, and say if um, I was packing up my friend's car, let's just put it into your um, situation. So I was packing up my car for them to, um, to move back to Hawaii and... Um, and um, and then at the end, the two characters have a conversation and you're talking about um, leaving. And then one character says, and how are you? You know, with the fact that that person's leaving. And then the person reflects and goes, it's all good. That would be a deflection to me. Or it is as it is. Like in those contexts, it would be a way of deflecting. But there's nothing wrong with deflecting. I'll deflect at points if I don't think that the other person's got the emotional emotional ability in that moment to hear really what I feel. Yeah. Like in conversation, I'll deflect if, you know, if I'm with somebody that I don't think can really hear everything that I have inside, then I will sit, uh, make a conversation simple. If you see what I mean. And what context do they say these things? Yeah. And, oh, you hit the nail on the head. We've, we've had some very deep, intimate conversations a lot. We've talked just for hours on the phone uh, uh, daily for a long time. And it comes in conversation often when something negative has happened to her and I'm being empathic and, you know, trying to, you know, to be helpful or just let her know how I, I'm sorry, she's feeling that. And so she says it back. So it feels like it's a conversation stopper to me that yeah. she doesn't. Want to go yeah, any further. And, and, yeah. And, and it's confusing because we've been very deep with each other. You know, it's not like it's yeah. out of context. Uh, it's so something her not feeling safe or or not something, wanting. Yeah. I mean, not wanting me to psychoanalyze her, which yeah. obviously I don't want to do. Yeah. I, I don't know. It hurt. It hurts basically. It's like so. What? Yeah. So so in you, it hurts because there's been a shutter that comes down. But she's got that right to put down a shutter. There's like um. Yeah, but it, it it stops the conversation because there's not much that you can say back to it. You can't say that's a shutter coming down. Yeah. Like in that moment, that will bring her back about annoyance because she's saying this is a boundary. We're stopping, and that's that conversation over. And if you bring up more, then she'll get annoyed. We're fascinated, yeah. aren't we? Yeah. It's so even though I consider her really deeply empathic, I just need to. What you just said is so key. I just to honor the fact that she she needs to stop there for some yeah. reason there's a, and and, oh. and there's uh -huh. nothing more that you can get out of it you can't push yeah you can't push yeah someone there but it's yeah. but the, this is the important thing to remember and this is what i'm so grateful for all the teachers that taught me writing and theater is that in conversation we're always it's always about an objective even if your objective is to be empathetic to the other person so the, the, and this is what's so beautiful about non-duality is that non-duality and that realization of who you truly are has no desires, no wants, no goal. 
but it can't yeah. speak, it can't feel, it's just here. Whereas on the human level, we are set up to move towards what we want and to move away from what we don't want. Whether that's being, even being altruistic is a, a setup of the body. And it's just noticing that in every moment on the human level. And so our conversations are geared towards that. So in this conversation, my motivation is to express love and to express knowledge and yeah. to enjoy myself as well. I enjoy talking about this subject, if you can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there's, there's, those, there's those motivations. Um, and, um, yeah. and your motivation is, it could be a combination of things. There could be all types of things. And this is how you write plays, as you, you, you get an overall idea of the, what you want the play to be about. You get an overall idea of the characters. And then you, set, you wind them up. What is it the characters want from each other? And that's the excitement in the dialogue. That's what we like watching, because we're all unconsciously analyzing all the time this game, but we're just not conscious of it. We're always analyzing in every moment what someone wants, what someone doesn't want, what they get, what they don't get always and we're fascinated and how they overcome pitfalls and this is why we're fascinated with tv films stories and we're obsessed yeah. with it because it's teaching us constantly how to deal with each other and how to deal with life mm. oh my well thank you sweetheart that that's really um that's a good context for me yeah. and i just have to reflect back yeah, that that's... i just love tuning in it's really you know oh, yeah. it's six in the, it's six in the morning in hawaii and i just i love it when i wake up in time to hear oh, you nice. live and your your joy is um it's validating for my joy oh, nice. <laughs> somehow yeah. Yeah. And, and just really back to what you. you, the conversation is just acknowledging that in that moment, you don't get what you want. So in that ah, moment, ah, you don't get what you want and that hurts. So whether it's I validation, want more, I want, yeah. more depth, I want more depth with her. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever it is, and then that hurts and it's just acknowledging that and seeing that pain and that happens to us all, all the time. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up uh, for, for me to be conscious of, yep, I'm not getting what I'm wanting here, but I'm wanting her to be comfortable also. So I back yeah. off. Yeah yeah. 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 And just feeling the pain of it and letting it, don't try and deny it with a story, just letting it be yeah. there. That, you know, human interaction Thank can you. be incredibly pleasurable, but it also can be painful. It's yeah. part of it. It's like playing a game, you know, when you play Monopoly or something, it can be really mm -hmm. pleasurable. It can be so painful when you keep <laughs> losing your houses and your money. <laughs> yes. Th thank you for reminding me of just uh, what I'm feeling there. That's, it's so, it's so core, so simple truth that, yeah. um, yes. Thank you, dear. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. It's really lovely to hear from you. I'm happy that you called in. Yes, thank you, sweetheart. Okay. Yeah. Bye bye. That's a love. Bye. I feel like I need to clarify something about myself. This is where my empath comes in strongly, and um, and I need to clarify that I have in many conversations and in many arguments used non-duality as a defense, as a mechanism to get what I want, and. Um, and even though I try not to do that, I have, I have done it. So even before awakening, after awakening, I'm um, recently, and I really try to work to, to, on the human level, just being totally human. But I, I'm sure I've used it many a times. And, um, and maybe in that conversation with Glenda, this is total empath stuff coming through because I can't lie. And it hurts me if I feel like I've lied. And with the, like I was enforcing that I try not to and making it sound like I never do. Whereas there's plenty of times that I do that to, to get what I want. And um, there we go. I've exposed myself. <laughs>